imagine you were very confident that we were going to be visited by super intelligent aliens um, in, let's say, 10 years or 20 years at the most. Super intelligent. So you think within 20 years yeah, so we have alien in here? <laughs> well, digital super intelligence will be like an alien. It will be like an alien. Yeah. But, but my question is, do you think there is other intelligent life outside the Earth? It seems probable. But I think this is, this is one of the great questions in physics and philosophy, uh, is uh, where are the aliens? Maybe they're among us, I don't know. Uh, some people think I'm an alien. Not true. Not true. But <laughs> maybe we are aliens. Of course I'd say maybe that. Maybe we I? are alien, Ellen. I mean, if you look at this part of the world, Yeah. They believe that human beings are not from Earth. They came from somewhere else. Eve Maybe. and Adam came from somewhere else to Earth. So in a way, human being alien to this mm -hmm. land. Do you think we'll make contact with alien within the, the next 50 years? Well, that's a really tough one to say. Um, I mean, if there are super intelligent aliens out there, they're probably already observing us. That would seem quite likely. And we just um, are not smart enough to realize it. Um, but I can do some, some back of the envelope calculations and um, any advanced alien civilization that, that was at all interested in populating the galaxy um, even without uh, without exceeding the speed of light, even if you're only moving at say 10 or 20 percent of the speed of light, um, you could uh, populate the entire galaxy in let's say 10 million years, maybe 20 million years max. This is nothing, you know, in the grand scheme of things. So Elon, you are really quite unique, I feel, in being so interested in the long-term future of humanity. Well, I don't think I'm that unique. Um, you have an institute. Uh, <laughs> clearly, you're interested in that, too. Well, I'm, uh, quite <laughs> I'm curious, your interest in the far future of humanity, when did that begin? How did that start? Well, uh, I think it was when I, my, my interest in the future of humanity is uh, I guess as a function of reading a lot of uh, sci-fi and philosophy as a kid and uh, and then um, and, and just sort of thinking about okay what, what's what's important uh, to do like why should, why do anything what's the meaning of life um, and you know I came to the conclusion that what we really need to do is um, make sure that life continues into the future um, and particularly conscious uh, life um, and, and in doing so we'll better we'll, we'll be better able to understand the nature of the universe and um, and, and achieve greater enlightenment uh, one thing I really admire about you is you don't just talk about the future of humanity you actually start companies and do things about it so what made you so audacious I don't really think of uh, these things as all that audacious. Uh, they seem like uh, natural things to do. Um, you know, it, um, it's sort of a, more of a long-term optimization rather than a short-term one. Um, and uh, yeah, I just um, not, not that I think you know everyone should be doing these things, but someone needs to do them. Um, so. So, you know, so if I see that, well, somebody is not doing this and maybe I could be helpful, uh, then, then, then I'd try to do something in that regard. Weren't there some people along the way though who told you that, ah, that's crazy to start a space company or a new electric car company or a well, solar company? Sure. I mean, there are lots of people that said uh, that the likelihood of failure was extremely high um, and that it was a stupid thing to do. Um, and when I started SpaceX, uh, one of my closest friends got a compilation of rocket failures and made me watch the whole thing. <laughs> um, and 
<laughs> and there were lots of people that tried to talk me out of it. Um, and the joke was, you know, how do you, how do you um, make a small fortune in the rocket business? Or you start with a large one. Um, <laughs> And um, I got told that joke so many times that um, that I, obviously I knew the punchline, you know. So I just tell them the punchline, and they would look at me like, "Is he serious?" Or, <laughs> um, or I was like, or like, or like, say, "Why did you start a rocket company?" And, and like, um, I was trying to figure out the fastest way to turn a large fortune into a small one. That seemed like a good way to go. <laughs> um, but but the thing is, like, I already thought the probability of failure was was high, and that, and that you know, with that the likelihood of success was therefore low, um, and uh, so this was not new information. I, I, I thought maybe SpaceX had, I don't know, 10 or 20 percent chance of success, and Tesla probably similar. Um, I thought I thought Solar City had a much higher chance of success. Um, but probably still only, you know, I don't know, 50% or something like that. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, for for the longest time, I mean, and, and SpaceX and Tesla almost didn't uh, survive. I mean, it came very close to perishing as companies um, in, in, in 2008 and 2009 with the Great Recession. Uh, it was an extremely close call. Looking ahead, what do you think are the technologies that are going to have the greatest impact on society? So I think there's there's probably five five categories. Yeah. Um, there's um, and you know I'm not even giving a particular order, but uh, making life multi-planetary, uh, achieving sustainable uh, production and consumption of energy. Uh, um, Obviously, the, the, the internet as a whole. I mean, the continued growth of the internet. Uh, the uh, and then potentially, if we do this, reprogramming human genetics, and, and the fourth one would be artificial intelligence. Um, so, you know, working on the, the kind of the first three, but not not the last two. Um, I think, you know, the last two I think have the greatest potential to be a double-edged sword. So when you call artificial intelligence a double-edged sword. Can you talk a bit about the positive edge first? What do you see as the greatest benefits we can get from AI? Well, um, the, the, the greatest benefits from AI would probably be uh, in eliminating uh, drudgery, so like in terms of or, or tasks that, 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 are, that are mentally boring, um, not, not interesting. Uh, there's uh, arguably breakthroughs in areas that are currently beyond human intelligence, or at least for now beyond human intelligence. I think we could probably solve them in the long term, uh, such as um, you know the classic sort of curing cancer and um, addressing diseases of aging, Alzheimer's, and all these things. So there's you know, insert you know various like. Intractable, intractable problems to human intelligence. Currently, what seem to be intractable problems, and then if you have something that was way smarter, it could solve those problems. And turning to negative uh, edge, right? um, well, I think it, it's it's best to prepare for uh, to, to try to prevent a negative circumstance from occurring, than to wait for it to occur and then be reactive. So, and, and this is a case where the potential, the range of negative outcomes, are quite, some of them are quite severe. Um, so it's not clear whether we'd be able to recover from some of these negative, negative outcomes. In fact, some of the, so you can construct scenarios where um, recovery of human civilization does not occur. Um, and when the risk is that severe, it seems like you should be proactive and not reactive. I'm really quite curious why uh, you decided to make such a large donation, because 10 million is something that really enables a massive amount of research. Um, I don't think 10 million is a large amount of money for, for this subject area. Um, it should probably be higher, um, but, but the, you know, it, it, the, there should be probably some much larger amount of money. Um, applied to AI safety um, in, in multiple ways. 
Well, I want to thank you again so Sorry. much for this. It's something we really, really appreciate and are eager to 